All right, it's uh, five o'clock Central European time. And so welcome everyone on this new webinar. This new webinar is for everyone who is wondering what these three strange letters F and C is standing for. Without any prior knowledge, you will learn everything about it today in this webinar. And for those who have the patience to uh, stay here in the webinar till the end, we have, as always, or almost always, a nice surprise waiting for you at the end. So hold on and stay here till the end of this webinar. So let's uh, dive into the content of today right away. And as I said today, everything is about FNC. And first of all, the question, why did we start something called FNC? Well, um, there are several reasons for us for starting the concept FNC. You will learn in a moment what FNC is about, but why, to begin with, did we uh, start this development? Well, uh, in the first place, we wanted to reduce the learning curve of users. If you go through the learning curve, for example, to uh, learn all the details in a grid component, and then suddenly you choose another uh, platform or target, uh, you would use another grid and go through a new learning curve. And that is, of course, painful. That's not efficient. That is a waste of time for you. And so that was one of the goals, that is to reduce learning curves. Another goal of our developments were to um, exchange or reuse user interface uh, logic and uh, business logic among several projects um, for different frameworks. So typically in the case of being a Delphi developer, you almost most likely started off with a Windows VCL based development. And at some point, uh, a FireMonkey cross-platform application development crosses your path. And um, we wanted to offer you the capability to reuse as much as possible of all the developments you did with uh, VCL Windows based um, components. Another goal is to offer or create one solid and reliable set of components that can be used everywhere instead of having somewhat functionality wise similar components for different platforms and uh, encounter the quirks or issues with components and um, different issues in different platforms and so on. So one solid and reliable component set was also a goal of um, investigating and creating something like FNC. If you endeavor to um, create your components yourself, it's also a way to offer you a capability to create a custom component once and then reuse it for multiple frameworks. And after all, this ID isn't that crazy. Um, it's already more or less um, uh, in the same degree available when you are a VCL developer and also develop from time to time in the FireMonkey framework. You see that also there, there is a large similarity between the VCL framework and the FireMonkey framework. And also the Lazarus LCL framework, for example, the T-Edit is well known, the list box, the button, the label, all these components are available for different frameworks and are somewhat, or let's say to a high degree, uh, similar. Unfortunately, these are not 100% uh, the same or similar. And that is where FNC comes into the game, where we uh, actually achieve this 100% um, similarity between the different platforms. So what is uh, FNC then? Well, it stands for Framework Neutral Components. That means components that can be used in several different frameworks and um, are everywhere the same. It offers you one code base for user interface controls, but at the same, but meanwhile, we also have um, 
several components classes that allow you to do things like cloud service access, um, common business logic, etc., that are all wrapped up in the FNC framework and that allow you uh, to use these components classes in the different uh, platforms. By doing this, we actually give you one uh, learning curve if you get familiar with um, a component. All that knowledge applies to framework VCL, framework FireMonkey, framework LCL, and as you will see also the DMS WebCore framework. Another advantage for you uh, with FNC is that you get all this with one license. So if you have the license to the FNC components, with these licensed components, you can use the components on every platform they are running on. And as such, it offers you a freedom of choice to uh, target VCL applications, FireMonkey, LCL, that is the framework in Lazarus, and also for web client applications, the TMS WebCore framework. And being empowered with the choice uh, between frameworks, you are also, of course, empow empowered to choose for what operating system you want to target your development. And all this, of course, with an, uh, a high, a very high um, uh, degree of portability. So how did we actually create this um, FNC framework, or some might call it an FNC abstraction layer? Um, it is built on top of the VCL or the FireMonkey or the LCL or the TMS WebCore framework. So it does not replace anything with, within VCL, FireMonkey, LCL or Web. No, it is an abstraction layer that is on top of uh, these different frameworks. And the controls, components that are uh, within the FNC component set, these are developed against this FNC abstraction layer. And by doing this, we actually achieve that with one code base, uh, we can uh, write or develop a uh, custom control or a component that will uh, work under VCL, under FireMonkey, Lazarus LCL, and also TMS WebCore. What kind of components are within the family of FNC components? First of all, an obvious thing is that there are, meanwhile, a lot of user interface controls. We also have non-visual components. We have a growing set of components to access uh, all kinds of popular cloud services. And uh, we already have um, a couple and also growing their uh, browser-based controls. In a moment, we will uh, cover more on these uh, browser-based controls. As I have explained, the FNC abstraction layer sits on top of uh, the VCL, FMX, LCL, or WebCore. And that means that it will uh, reuse the base classes of these uh, frameworks as much as possible. So um, that means in, um, in more detail that, for example, an uh, FNC edit control will when it is used in a VCL application, it will use the T-edit from the VCL. It will use the T-edit from the FireMonkey framework when you are using um, it within a FireMonkey application for cross-platform usage. Or it will use the LCL T-edit or the WebCore T-edit. That means, and I think that is a very important message, that we are not... Um, recreating uh, standard controls like a list box, a button, an edit control, and so on. We are not uh, recreating that in some kind of abstract way. No, um, we are actually internally using the native framework controls. And uh, that means that when using these controls, they will, of course, feel at home as much as possible within the operating system where it runs. If, for example, you use a T, um, an FNC edit control in a uh, TMS WebCore web client application, 
it eventually will come down to using an HTML input element in the browser. So it will behave, look and, and be 100% what one is expecting from an input control in the browser. Of course, we will also use um, the RTL code from Delphi or be it from Lazarus or be it from the RTL code that is in the WebCore framework that is uh, reused as much as possible. Also here, we are not uh, reinventing the wheel. And that also applies to platform APIs. I'm talking here about, um, for example, Windows APIs to perform um, internet-based uh, functions like HTTP requests. That is, of course, uh, something offered by the operating system, and that will be taken advantage of from the, from the FNC uh, framework. Also here, the message is we are not re reinventing the wheel. We are using what is available in each operating system. And to a degree, you can consider a browser a kind of operating system where there is also an API, also things like uh, HTTP requests and these native um, APIs within these different operating systems are used from the FNC components controls. And finally, um, where applicable, where a browser is used to um, obtain specific functionality, we also use the operating system browser. That means that when you use an uh, FNC control that is internally based on the browser, it will not involve any additional overhead to install a complete uh, browser engine with all the files involved, make deployment complex and large, etc. No, uh, we use here the already standard default installed and available browser on the um, operating system. Family of uh, FNC products has been growing um, ever since we started FNC, and that goes back to uh, 2017, where we um, published the first FNC components. The research goes back to 2016, but since uh, 2017, we have uh, been continuing to develop a meanwhile large set of components and also large set of products. Um, everything is built on top of the FNC core. This is the core library. You can also call it that FNC abstraction layer. And uh, as such, um, the FNC YPAC will rely on use the FNC core uh, product. That FNC core product is also available standalone for developers who want to create custom controls or use the core functionality only. Um, that is available standalone. Also uh, building, of course, on FNC Core is FNC Charts, a uh, component for creating all kinds of uh, charts. We have FNC Blocks, which is a diagramming component set. There is uh, FNC Maps that offers um, mapping, geographical maps, and various uh, geographical oriented um, functionality on top of these maps. There is the FNC Cloud Pack, which offers you access to various popular cloud services from all these different uh, frameworks and platforms. And a last one for now, because there is more coming in the coming uh, months. We are still working on extending, enhancing, adding uh, functionality to FNC. But the last one for now is the FNC Dashboard Pack, and that offers uh, controls like gauges and uh, volume meters, knobs, uh, all these typical kind of things that you uh, expect when you create a dashboard application. So let's um, dive in a little bit deeper technically now in uh, to uh, how these components are architected. Um, we have created uh, several classes and when you use these classes um, and develop against these classes, descend from these classes, your component that you developed will run everywhere. What is needed uh, in these components? Well, we have the FNC custom control, that is the base class for creating custom controls. And this base class will, of course, abstract and handle 
everything that is related to user interface input control. So handling of the keyboard, the mouse, touch, drag and drop, all these kind of things are um, available in the TMS FNC custom control and can be handled using overrides of virtual functions. And this is um, a set of methods that you can override. And of course, this set of methods is, there's one, there's only one set of methods. So it's um, everywhere on every platform against every framework, the code will be exactly the same. It will be identical to um, draw within controls, to, to do your custom drawing. We have actually replaced what is available in the VCL. It's uh, the canvas. Um, we have, well, replaced is not the perfect word. We have abstracted this in the TMS FNC graphics class. And this class will use the VCL canvas on um, Windows in a VCL application. It will use the FireMonkey graphics context to um, do its painting for FireMonkey controls. And it will use the LCL based canvas to draw in, um, in the LCL framework when creating applications with the Lazarus IDE. And so um, every custom painting can be achieved by using the TTMS FNC graphics class. To deal with images, we have created a TMS FNC bitmap, and that is a generic um, image class, and it deals with a large set of file formats. So that handles uh, JPEG, um, GIF, bitmap, um, and even SVG. Uh, all that is possible with the TTMS FNC bitmap. With respect to uh, data binding, here we uh, offer our use the classic data binding that is also available from um, the Delphi VCL framework or the FireMonkey uh, framework. And that is based with a data source and a data set and properties such as uh, control.datasource data field to do that classic kind of data binding. That was for user interface controls when we have a look at our cloud service components. Here we have created a uh, class, TTMS FNC Custom Cloud Base, and that uh, cloud base offers you a set of functions that perform all kinds of uh, HTTP requests with all the details, the get, put, post, delete uh, method uh, with data, uh, etc. error handling, all that is uh, bundled into the TMS FNC Custom Cloud Base class. Of course, on every operating system, it will use the underlying operating system API to achieve um, the actual HTTP uh, code. A very important remark is that from the ground up, FNC cloud uh, service-based components are uh, fully asynchronous. That means that um, when you perform a request, the uh, request response is handled or offered in an asynchronous way. And this ensures that when you use this in your applications, you will never encounter uh, things like uh, UI freeze because some kind of HTTP requests is uh, taking a longer time than expected. Another class of components are the browser-based um, controls. So components that need internally a browser to do uh, to achieve a certain functionality. And here we have introduced the TMS FNC custom web control. So if you descend from that class, you can actually create a custom component that will internally um, render, most likely render, its user interface in a browser and interact with it. And we have offered an, uh, or included in that uh, component uh, the necessary bridging. So you can call JavaScript functions from um, your application where you use the component, but you can also have JavaScript code running in that browser that will make calls to uh, the application where this component is hosted. Another um, 
part that is an essential part of the FNC components is the PDF engine. The PDF engine, which is available in FNC core, allows you to um, generate yourself um, PDF files, but also uh, allows you to um, render controls or part of controls uh, onto a uh, PDF file. So if you need to deal with uh, PDFs, that can also be achieved or done uh, from the FNC components. And this is offered or available through the TMS FNC custom PDF graphics libs. And this uh, component or class uh, deals with a lot of complexities that are um, involved with creating a PDF file that includes uh, font table handling. So as most of you will know, when you create a PDF file, achieving that the PDF file looks the same on every operating system with or without having these fonts installed, that is achieved by embedding a font table into that PDF file. All that is being taken care of by the FNC PDF library. There is also internally a lot of encoding and compression, decompression needed to do uh, things um, like a PDF uh, generation. Also, that is, of course, part of um, the PDF library. And um, as I mentioned, um, everything that you can draw on an FNC graphics context or canvas, uh, like you will uh, want to name it, uh, can be rendered onto uh, PDF graphics. Another core part of FNC is an SVG engine. So uh, SVG um, images, vector images, can also be used in uh, FNC everywhere. So we have implemented this uh, engine that parses SVG files and it will uh, render these um, SVGs within components or standalone as you uh, want it. And of course, uh, SVG is a great way to uh, render sharp images on uh, all kinds of um, screens with different DPIs, high DPI, etc. So that is also a standard part of um, the FNC core, that is. Um, I see that questions are already um, coming in. Can a PDF file be shown from a memory stream? Um, the PDF engine is um, at this moment available for generating uh, PDF files, not yet for viewing PDF files. So generating and generating to a memory stream, these are uh, all possible, uh, viewing not yet. And is PDF encryption also supported? At this moment, uh, this is not supported. Um, what can be done when security is um, important in relationship to PDF files, that is that you can uh, digitally sign these uh, PDF files with the PADES component that is available in the TMS cryptography pack. Okay, um, let's continue um, with um, another part, a not so visible part of the FNC components, which is a set of utility classes. So if you need to deal with uh, JSON, XML is actually also uh, included there. If you want to persist um, component settings, there is a persistence uh, component in um, the FNC core and all kinds of functions to um, encode and uh, decode. These are all uh, included in FNC core. Where is FNC available? Well, it can be installed, obviously, in Delphi and C++ Builder. So it it's, uh, can be used in uh, both um, languages for Delphi users, for C++ Builder users. And when you have it installed, uh, you can take advantage of FNC when you create a VCL application, but also when you create a FireMonkey application. And finally, also when you have installed TMS WebCore to create web client applications, that can also be done directly out of, uh, in this case for TMS WebCore, the Delphi IDE. Important note is that TMS WebCore does not support at this time C++ Builder. Another um, 
IDE that you can use for um, the FNC components is the Lazarus IDE. So if you have uh, the FNC components, if you have uh, the licensed version, you can install the components at the same time as you do in Delphi, also in uh, the Lazarus IDE. And finally, when you're using uh, WebCore, there's another IDE that you can use if you have a preference to use Visual Studio Code for creating TMS WebCore web client applications. The FNC components can also be installed in Visual Studio Code. Now, before we dive into examples and coding, some more background on uh, how these uh, different um, or how the FNC components achieve to um, be usable on all these different frameworks and targets. Um, as you can see, um, when we have a look, a detailed look at uh, how are the canvas uh, or how are we doing painting, drawing in the different frameworks, um, you can see that in the VCL, this is achieved by using the T canvas. In the FireMonkey framework, this is um, also a T canvas, but this is a an, um, an class uh, that is in the unit fmx.graphics. And um, here there are different implementations for different operating systems. Uh, the T canvas in FireMonkey is not compatible with the T canvas in the VCL. It has other methods. One important difference is already that in um, FMX, the um, graphical coordinates are in floating point, while uh, of course in the VCL, it's all integer based. In LCL, it's uh, also uh, via the T canvas class, but which is again an entirely different class. Here, um, the difference with VCL is that the LCL canvas can be used on Windows, Mac, and uh, Linux. Uh, VCL, obviously, only Windows. Uh, that canvas class is also not 100% compatible with uh, the VCL canvas, different methods, slightly different methods, um, etc. So, uh, something to um, yeah, take care of and, and something that we handle on top of that in the FNC framework to abstract that and to make it um, the, the same code usable everywhere. Finally, we have the uh, TMS WebCore T Canvas class, which we modeled after uh, the VCL Canvas. So the interface, the methods is um, modeled after the VCL Canvas, but internally it will uh, use the HTML5 canvas and the HTML5, the JavaScript APIs that allow you to draw on that uh, graphical context of an HTML5 canvas. Um, if we have a deeper look at the differences between the canvases on uh, these different uh, frameworks, you can see, for example, that in uh, VCL and LCL, we have things like uh, brushes and pens. We can draw rectangles, polygons, etc. In uh, FireMonkey, it's already different where we do not have a brush and a pen. We have a fill and a stroke. We are not using move to line tool. We are using draw line and etc. Many more uh, differences. And so um, we abstracted all that and uh, we will have a brief look at an, um, a snippet out of the interface of the abstracted class. If we look at the image files, how the different frameworks deal with different types of images. In the VCL, everything started back in the 90s when a bitmap was basically uh, the, the one and only format for drawing images. Um, so bitmap, T-bitmap is in the VCL. Then we, um, the T-picture was introduced to offer um, um, a kind of abstraction that allowed us to use different um, image formats. And um, we have actually in uh, the VCL uh, also offered support for SVG. So um, through the TMS FNC SVG bitmap um, class. In LCL there we have a T picture to draw images and this supports out of the box bitmap files, GIFs, JPEG and uh, PNG. And uh, it's somewhat similar in the FMX with the T bitmap. 
in the web. It's a uh, different story where, of course, the browser will render all kinds of uh, images in different formats. And here, of course, um, the bitmap will wrap around that HTML IMG element and that takes care of uh, drawing the images. So if we look at how an FNC component developer will um, take advantage of all this, but write the code only once, you will um, descend from different classes such as TMS FNC custom control or uh, TMS FNC custom scroll control. You will descend from a TMS FNC cloud base if you uh, want to write a component for accessing a cloud service. When you perform the drawing in a custom control, you will use instead of a T canvas, you will use the TMS FNC graphics class. Um, and within that class, uh, you will find uh, different classes to deal with uh, parts of the graphics. That is, of course, things like a fill, a stroke, a font, um, colors, and the bitmaps within that uh, graphics class that um, allow you to um, draw images. I see one message that there is no uh, video stream. Is that confirmed? from others can you maybe confirm if you see the video stream or not i see messages that the video stream is uh, fine so maybe if, if you encounter an issue uh, try to reconnect and uh, that should uh, restart the video stream and uh, hopefully everything will uh, be restored and will work fine Okay, let's have a look at the signature of um, this uh, TMS FNC custom control class. What's uh, the interface uh, available? Uh, you can see here all, all kinds of virtual methods that you can override. Things like handle mouse leave, mouse enter, mouse move, uh, etc. Uh, also keyboard related um, events. Um, these are all offered through overrides of uh, virtual methods. If you override these methods, this will ensure that your code will be fine in uh, every operating system where you will use um, the FNC controls. And the same applies to the TMS FNC graphics class, where um, when you use, for example, draw path, that draw path, it will eventually use the VCL canvas, for example, to draw that path, but it will use um, on in the browser, it will use the graphical context of an HTML5 canvas to do uh, the same. It means um, when you use draw arc in the FNC graphics class, that it will simply, uh, you write it once and it will run everywhere. All right, I think that was already uh, a great part of an uh, introduction uh, about the goals, why and what is FNC and how the architecture is a build up. And I think it's uh, more than time to uh, switch to the IDE where you where we can see these uh, things in action. All right, so I will first of all switch to the Delphi IDE. And in this uh, Delphi IDE, I have installed um, uh, almost all, I believe, FNC uh, components. So what you can see here is FNC blocks for FMX. So that's the FMX side of um, the FNC blocks control. Here we have the design time support for FNC blocks. And we also have a package that offers the VCL side of uh, the FNC blocks controls. And the same applies for charts for our cloud pack. Here we have the FNC core, also the FMX part, the design time part, the VCL part, dashboard pack, FNC apps is also installed here and FNC UI pack, as you can see. What that means is when I create a uh, new VCL application, that means that on my component palette, I will see components such as the FNC banner. I can drop it on the form that is coming out of the FNC UI pack. But at the same time, I also have the FNC, FNC 
chart components uh, from the FNC charts product, or um, I also have a component like um, here, this uh, FNC widget gauge, a gauge control, and that is out of the dashboard pack. So this is a uh, VCL application, and I can, of course, compile and run this directly from the Delphi IDE. And as expected, this is our VCL application and all the things that you um, expect from this application is available out of the box. Now, what we do is we do uh, the same thing for a FireMonkey application. Oops, we, we create a multi-device application. And in this FireMonkey application, we will, of course, be able to do exactly the same. The IDE is taking its time to create the form. The form is ready. And my FNC components banner is also available here. And the same applies to the FNC chart also available and I can compile and run this exactly the same as a FireMonkey application. And when I would switch the target to the Mac or to Linux via FMX Linux or to an Android or iOS application, it will do exactly the same. So we have 100% identical behavior, look and feel in this um, FireMonkey application. So this is um, what is uh, for VCL and FireMonkey, but that's not all that we can do in uh, the Delphi IDE. We can do the same in a TMS WebCore application. So I have also TMS WebCore installed here. And now it is creating a WebCore application for me. My machine is a bit slow these days. I think someone is expecting me to buy a new machine, but when it is in the process, it is all, it's still reasonable. Okay, so I will save this project here under um, FNC, that's what we do here. Let's put this in the folder web. Okay, so my Teams web core application will be generated in that folder. And no surprises here, the FNC controls are also available in the form designer for Teams. Web core, and we can create a web client application from here. So when I compile and run this application, now actually the FNC code is transpiled to JavaScript code, and it will run directly directly out of uh, the browser. So let's. Uh, see the result. It is now starting the browser and I need to move this browser window here to the screen. And so this is the result. Still, it is exactly the same behavior, the same look and feel, but in this case in a browser. And actually from the Delphi IDE, we can do even more we can use TMS WebCore to create a cross-platform web technology-based desktop application. And this is achieved through the Miletus uh, framework that is part of TMS WebCore. So now I'm creating a Miletus application. And when I compile that uh, Miletus application, it will generate for me a desktop application, but the desktop application 
is internally built up or based on web technology. So let's also save this in some folder um, and we call this folder desktop. Here, this one. Okay. All files saved. And again, I can put this same component on this Miletus application. When I compile now, that will generate a Windows executable. But Miletus also allows us to create from here a Linux application, a Linux desktop application, or a um, macOS application. So here is the Miletus desktop application. And as you can see also here, 100% same um, look and feel, same behavior, etc. That is at this moment, everything you can do with FNC on with or with the Delphi IDE. Let's have a look now what we can do with um, the Lazarus IDE. Where is my form designer? Let's create a new uh, project and a regular application. Okay. And as you can see, I have installed in Lazarus the FNC UI pack. I have also installed the FNC chart. So when I pick and drop these components on the form, they appear on the form designer. And in the UI pack uh, here, I believe I have, this is the FNC planner. So it's actually exactly the same. And also from here, I can compile and run this application from the Lazarus IDE. Takes a moment to um, compile this application, but in a moment it will be running here on Windows. If you are using Lazarus directly from the Mac or directly from a Linux machine, it will be exactly the same experience from these other operating systems. So it's uh, linking my application right now. And it's uh, successful. So now my application should appear, should start. Okay, here it is. This is the same components, but from a Lazarus application. Okay. And that's not all. There's still one more IDE from where we can use uh, the FNC components. Here we have Visual Studio Code. And if I go in the command palette, I can have a look at the installed packages in the Visual Studio Code IDE for TMS WebCore. And as you can see, I have here installed FNC Core, FNC UI Pack Chart and Dashboard Pack. So these components are available when I create a new uh, web application from Visual Studio Code. And let's also save these somewhere on the hard disk in a VSC folder. Okay. So it's creating a new project now with one form in the project. So let's open this form. Form designer is opening. Okay. Here it is. And so we have the form designer and no surprises here as well. If we have a look at the tool palette, we can also find here the FNC planner and the FNC chart is also installed here. Here it is. Notice that, oops, that is within as a child of a planner 
I want to have it here. Okay, next to the planner. Notice here that the designer, this form designer in Visual Studio Code is actually a browser. So it's all rendered with web technology. So here we have at design time live the FNC components. And so obviously I can compile and run it. And when I compile and run this web core client application from the Visual Studio Code IDE, obviously it will generate for us a uh, web client application running in the browser. So it's building the application almost ready now, I believe. Here you can see uh, the compile progress. Let's have a look if I can expand that. Okay. It's still working a little bit. This is actually um, the compiler that is uh, invoked from the Visual Studio Code IDE. It takes a moment, but it will come for sure. Okay, it's taking its time. Yeah, I have always experienced that the machine is somewhat slower when the screen capture is uh, going on during uh, webinars. That is apparently um, capturing the screen and uh, streaming it is apparently taking its toll. So, especially here on this task, apparently, it's taking some time. But okay, it should work. I'm not sure why it's taking so long. So maybe while it's uh, doing this thing in the background, I can uh, move on to the Delphi IDE. And when it comes up, I will just open the browser. Ah, okay. Here is the browser already with my um, web core application generated from uh, Visual Studio Code. And also here it's 100% the same uh, application. All right, we are back in the Delphi IDE. And I wanted to uh, take you to the FNC grid and show you a couple of things in connection with that FNC grid. So we will put the FNC grid on the form. And what I want to show you first is actually the how FNC will deal with SVG images. What we have here is the FNC bitmap container. You can um, compare this somewhat to a VCL image list. Uh, with the difference that it allows you to um, add uh, whatever images to the bitmap container. It can uh, have a mix of images, not only from different formats, but also um, in different sizes. And these images can be used at the same time in multiple controls. So it's an efficient way of using images in FNC applications. So what I will do here is uh, pick some SVG images and if I remember correct here here under resources I should find some SVG images it uh, is not being rendered here in um, um, the Windows Explorer preview so uh, when I pick this SVG it's actually here is the PNG version from it but this is the SVG file so I add it to um, this bitmap container. Let, let's pick some other SVG image. Let's take this, uh, okay. Um, let's pick this one, SVG. Okay. 
And now I will add my bitmap container to the grid control. Here I assign it just like I would assign an image list. And I will add some code here. Put images in cells. Add bitmap cell one. And I reference in this case uh, the bitmap in the bitmap container via its name. Every bitmap in the bitmap container has a name. I have here the default names. I have not bothered to give it another name, um, but that's how you can um, reference images in the bitmap container. And as you can see in my cell, these SVG um, images have been rendered in the grid. And this way you can use uh, SVG everywhere in FNC applications. What I want to show next is um, how we can deal with PDF generation from an FNC application. What I will use for that is the TMS FNC grid uh, PDF IO. And that is a uh, component that will internally use um, the PDF FNC engine but it is wrapped and it takes care of rendering grids directly to um, PDF. So let's uh, fill the grid with some uh, data. I have prepared a code snippet to move a little bit faster. That's a simple SVG uh, a CSV file that we will load into the grid. And that um, CSV file has uh, one column and um, in that column, we will put an image. So I will actually, with the on get cell data event, that is, the, that is the event that I'm looking for. The on get cell data event is triggered whenever uh, the cell is rendered. The, S, the CSV file uh, contains a reference to an image. And what I will do is um, convert this into um, HTML that references um, this uh, image file on my hard disk. So that um, what is in the CSV file as a text for the image file, I convert it to an uh, HTML IMG element. And uh, this way it will be rendered in the grid as an image. So let's have a look when i do this what the result is okay i click the button to load the csv file and as you can see that has happened so it's actually um, a csv file with all cities around the world so you see the city name the country and you see the amount of citizens and here you see a view of an, uh, the city a famous picture of the city so that's some simple code to uh, fill that grid with some data. And what I can do now is export this to a uh, PDF file. So what I do now is as simple as the FIO components and save this to some file. Let's call this grid.pdf. Okay, let's fill the grid again with the data and now generate this um, PDF. Now the question of course is where was the PDF generated? Maybe it's better that, or I believe that. Oh. Okay, let's uh, put this in some folder so that I can at least find it again so that I can show it to you all right open and render the PDF and now I should find it already here grid.pdf was created a minute ago and here you can see 
uh, the PDF generated from uh, this grid with all um, the pictures as it is on uh, the form. So that's one example of how you can create uh, PDF files. I see a uh, question also about uh, PDF files in the web. Well, that functionality is uh, also available in web applications. So I will show a uh, demo about that here. So we have a demo that is actually included in the FNC UI pack and the web, the demos for web core applications are under demo web. And here we have a demo that uh, shows the PDF engine that is used from the web core web client application. This is actually a demo that will work under VCL, FMX, LCL, and also WebCore. And it's all using the same code base. Here uh, you can find uh, the code for this demo. And this code will be 100% the same, be it under um, VCL, FMX, or also under the web. What this code is doing is generating a PDF file on the fly. Um, and this is a mix of rendering text on a PDF, rendering images on a PDF, but also render controls on a PDF. So I let me move the browser back to uh, this uh, presenter screen. So here we have the web application. And what we have here is that uh, FNC gauge control. And here we have actually an FNC grid. So this is a grid that has been customized with some colors depending on the body mass index. And so let's uh, put my data in here. So if you look at where um, I am positioned, so fortunately I'm still in the green zone. So that looks good. And now, I can click to export this to PDF. So now on the fly from the browser, so there is no interaction with the server at all. The PDF file is uh, generated inside the browser. So it's a JavaScript um, doing all the work to create that uh, PDF file. And that includes actually also um, building up the font tables that are necessary for uh, a proper PDF file. So when I, um, save this uh, file there okay so this is the pdf file generated on the fly and let's have a look at this folder you can see the pdf file that was generated here and this is um, the result in the pdf reader so you can see it's my bmi report for uh, me and this is my value so uh, this was uh, generated on the fly directly out of the browser and 100% the same code. Uh, you can use that um, from VCL or from FMX or an LCL wherever you want. And uh, other item that I wanted to show in um, this session today was the browser based controls. And in this case, I'm uh, talking about FNC Maps. So FNC Maps is our uh, FNC component for showing maps. And um, this is not only cross framework, it works in VCL, FMX, LCL, WebCore. It's also a cross uh, platform. It works in all these different operating systems. But there is even more, it's also cross service. That means that um, I can configure this um, mapping control with a simple uh, single property to specify what uh, mapping service I will use. And uh, if you have a look at this drop down, here you see the different kinds of mapping services that this component can handle. For Google, I need to specify an API key. So obviously, we don't see anything yet for open layers, which is an, uh, a free open source um, mapping service. We don't need an API key. So we see the mapping service already live here in um, the VCL application. 
and um, I can add some uh, code here. To, um, oops, it's to be placed outside the map control. Okay. And what I can do here is DMS FNC apps set center coordinates, and here I need to uh, FNC maps coordinate. I believe this is the function that should generate my coordinate from a long longitude and a an, uh, latitude. So let's me look up some longitude and latitude. Where is my browser? Okay, here it is. And let's go, no, that's not what I want. Let's go to Google and uh, let's bring up Brussels longitude latitude. Okay, and okay, these are the numbers I'm interested in. Let's copy and paste these like this. Okay, so what I'm doing now is adding the code to uh, set the center of the map to the city of Brussels. I'm getting a compile issue here, and um, that is because that function to get my coordinate is, it can find this uh, function. Uh, it can only, it has an overload that can directly take uh, longitude and latitude uh, easier. Okay. So the default coordinate the map starts up with is New York City. If I press the button, it will move my map to uh, Brussels. Now, this is the code that I have used with um, OpenStreetMaps. What I will do now is simply um, select my map. Okay, I will make this a little bit smaller and you will understand why I make this a little bit smaller. Because I will now um, grab my Google API key like this. And I will paste it here in the IDE. And when I did that, I can go under service, switch to Google Maps. And now I'm using my API key with Google Maps and I can execute exactly the same code on Google Maps in this case. Okay, my Google Maps and Google of course will also move to the city of Brussels with these coordinates. So uh, what I wanted to show you is that with exactly the same code just switching one property, the service uh, property, that um, you can um, switch to another mapping service. And to uh, round up this um, webinar, let's have a quick look at uh, cloud services. And for that, I have an uh, already prepared demo. It would take a little bit too much effort to build everything up from uh, the ground up. Uh, so what I have here is um, the FNC cloud storage service component. Also, this component is not only cross framework and cross platform, it's also cross service. That means that I can use that same control um, for accessing a service like Dropbox, Google uh, Drive, Microsoft OneDrive, uh, etc. So let's um, have a look when I uh, run this demo. I have preset um, the settings for my Google Drive. So the Google API uh, client ID and secret and the callback URL that I specified in my Google Developer Console. 
And now I will uh, connect to uh, Google and it again, it's opening up in my browser and I put, a, put it here on uh, this screen. So what is happening here is all out in action. So I need to authenticate this application that it is allowed to um, access my uh, Google Drive. So um, here we get a notification that Google has not verified this application. What does it mean? That means that um, the key the, that I have requested from Google, that that key is not yet, um, that I did not go through the approval process uh, from Google to get that key actually approved. So I buy, it's a warning, I bypass it, and then I can um, allow that my application using this key will access the files on my Google Drive. So here you see that the authentication and authorization was uh, successful. And when that happened, um, it actually filled up this list with all the files that are in my um, Google Drive. So I can open this folder with all kinds of uh, images. Let's um, download this image. I click and I uh, download. And it asks me where to save this image. I'm fine with saving in the documents folder. Let's go to the documents folder. And here you can see the image that was uh, downloaded. So let's have a look at this image. Okay. So here it is, a book cover. So um, you can see that I can interact with that application directly with my Google Drive um, files. When, of course, I would have picked a different uh, storage service, uh, exactly the same code would uh, do the same uh, functionality, but on a different cloud storage service. So that is something that is achieved through this FNC Cloud Pack with um, these uh, abstract components for cloud service in this case. So that brought us already a little bit over the hour. So it's uh, time to a roundup and let's bring back the slides okay and don't worry the slides um, we will send them um, with the email that we will send out after this presentation so you will get the slides no worries um, so that brings us to the end of the presentation where um, maybe first I will handle some uh, questions. So I will have a look at the question pane in um, the Web Academy to see what uh, questions I might have missed. Okay, I see that uh, my colleague, Peter, who is actually the father and architect of um, the FNC framework, uh, is also here attending this uh, webinar. I see he already handled some questions. Um, so let's have a look at what is still unanswered. How easy is it to lay out FNC within a template-based uh, layout in WebCore? Uh, so what I recommend for uh, in this case is um, you can, as you have seen in a WebCore application, you can add uh, the FNC components on uh, the designer. So what you do is you add a web HTML diff uh, component on the form. You can do whatever you want to do um, for um, the layout of that diff, you can let uh, Bootstrap uh, control the layout of that diff. And then you add the FNC control as a client component and a client aligned uh, component there in this uh, web HTML diff. And uh, that means that the layout that you apply to the diff will actually apply to the FNC um, component. That is 
um, my recommendation for um, handling this. The FNC component itself does not have the element ID, so it cannot directly be mapped to an HTML element. But that's why uh, we created the HTML diff component with the element ID that you can uh, map onto an um, HTML template uh, element and have the HTML template take care of the layout. Um, another question here is um, from a design point of view, what is the best starting point? Desktop first, mobile first, or web first? Um, I think that's a tricky question in the sense that I don't think there is an answer that uh, suits all needs. Um, we see actually users using different approaches for different cases. Uh, so I think um, it will really depend on the kind of application and the target audience, uh, what approach you will use uh, first. We have, for example, users, there's actually um, a blog about that application. Um, that is an, uh, a developer who had an existing VCL application for his customers. And he did a desktop first approach to create a uh, web client application where also FNC components are used. And he used the desktop first approach. His reasoning for that case was, okay, my uh, customers, my users are familiar with the UI that I created for my desktop application. And now, okay, I can offer my customers an uh, application that they, can, that they can directly run from the web. They are directly familiar with, they, they know the user interface. And that was his reasoning for uh, this specific approach. And in other cases will of course be different. Um, I would definitely recommend to use HTML templates if you want to get the maximum out of um, the, the rendering, the, a nice uh, responsive user interface, um, most likely created with um, existing HTML templates to take advantage of that will um, accelerate creating uh, the user interface and map uh, your components on uh, these uh, HTML template elements. Other question is, um, I bought TMS WebCore. In this packet is included FNC components. FNC components are not included in WebCore. They are optional. So uh, it's a free choice whether you use FNC uh, with WebCore or not. Um, as we have seen here today, FNC can be used in VCL applications, in FireMonkey applications. So it's actually, in a sense, way more than just uh, for WebCore. And that's why we made this an optional choice. Also inside WebCore, there are already um, grid components and, um, and many other controls uh, that allow you to create out of the box uh, many um, useful applications. Uh, but we leave it as a free choice if you want uh, the specific additional functionalities uh, that FNC offers in your web applications. Take, for example, this planner control. This planner control is obviously not out of the box available in TMS WebCore, and that could be a nice addition to uh, your web application development if you need to create some kind of scheduling um, application. Um, the question, can FNC PDF IO work in WebCore and save file locally? That question was demonstrated, so that is actually uh, working. Um, why TMS FNC bitmap container cannot be selected to exist in a data module? Okay, that's a technical question. On a data module, you can actually only add non-visual components. Um, a TMS FNC bitmap container is in a strict sense not a not visual component. The reason for that is that that component needs to be available for both VCL and FireMonkey. So it you need to be able to add that component with the same name, same class name on a VCL application and on a an, um, FireMonkey application. And so it's a visual control because it descends from a T custom control in the VCL and it descends from a FireMonkey T control in the FireMonkey framework. And that's why 
it has a different class hierarchy and that's why uh, you can install these classes with the same name for two frameworks and um, that's why uh, it's uh, unfortunately not possible to use that on a data module you can of course use that um, on a regular form and i see here um, a suggestion from another um, webinar attendee uh, to put the bitmap container on empty form instead of a data module that's indeed a good tip or a good alternative if you want to isolate so to speak um, or bundle uh, the fnc bitmap containers um, and not uh, re repeatedly add these two multiple forms in the application um, another question here is instead of a callback URL. What are the alternatives that do not need Windows firewall manipulation? Um, that is uh, as far with cloud services, uh, that is um, technically not possible. The reason here is obviously how the OAuth 2 protocol is working. Uh, the OAuth 2 protocol, a part of that protocol is uh, the callback. Uh, so the web server against which you are authenticating and authorizing performs that uh, callback to uh, pass along the authentication token that you then need for um, performing these accesses. And so that's a critical part of the OAuth 2 uh, specification. And uh, there is uh, another workaround for that um, part of the OAuth uh, protocol. Another question that I see um, here is um, referring to the earlier question um, regarding the use of a bitmap container on the data module. Um, and here the answer is T form rather than a T frame uh, that you can use. An empty T form that you are actually only, that you will never show in uh, your application when it's running, but you can. Uh, refer to it for accessing uh, all the bitmap containers that you put on this uh, particular form as a workaround for or instead of a, a data module. All right, I believe, let me have a look here. <laughs> okay, I see another question. I read the question. I hope you have a discount code. I have credit card warmed up and ready. That's a uh, good question to remind me, of course, that I need to show you our surprise for today, which is, of course, a discount. We have a discount, 25% today for the FNC Component Studio. So the code for this um, discount is here on this page, tms-fncweb-0621, and it's valid till June 24. The URLs where this discount code applies uh, is here. So this uh, applies actually on TMS FNC Component Studio in three, three different uh, license types. There is uh, the single developer license, the small team license, and the site license. It's offered for all these three different types of licenses. All right, maybe I leave it open here. So uh, if you want to take advantage of it, now is the moment. And okay, I see uh, for now no more new questions. So that means if you have no more questions that we can um, close this webinar. As always, know that uh, you can reach us via the regular channels, our support center, or via email if you uh, get started on FNC and you have uh, particular questions, don't hesitate to get in touch with the team. We are here to help you to get uh, the most out of uh, FNC for your applications. And our team is, of course, 
um, as always, still very actively developing the next um, developments for FNC. We can assure, we cannot reveal today yet um, what exactly will be coming, but uh, we are actually working on a new um, member of the FNC family and um, I think we will be able to uh, surprise you once more when we reveal the first version of that. Uh, that will most likely be somewhere in uh, July. And of course, it will be automatically part of the FNC Component Studio. So if you have the studio already or decide to take advantage of the discount, everything that we add to the studio will automatically become available for you. I see a question here. Can I use this coupon code only for one FNC component? Uh, this action for today was prepared uh, by my colleague, Masia, uh, and she prepared it for the FNC component studio, which we believe is um, by far the best deal because the amount of components and functionality within that bundle is um, I think very large and will only grow for the time coming. I see a question here. I wish uh, that there is also an FNC workflow studio. Um, our team has already been uh, reflecting in that uh, direction. We have FNC blocks that uh, is actually um, the basis on which um, we can further develop something like FNC Workflow Studio. So when we have the resources and the time, that is certainly something um, under consideration. Okay, if there are no more questions, I wish you all a uh, nice day, a good day. Um, productive Delphi or object Pascal development. And uh, I hope to see you again sometime in upcoming webinars. We will keep you up to date and post it for new content that is coming. Thanks a lot for being here. Thanks for the time you spent here during this uh, webinar and hopefully till soon. Bye bye everyone.